Hi, this is Cooking with Kurt and today I'm going to show you how to make the perfect pavlova. It's a meringue dessert with fruit and cream named after the Russian ballerina Anna Pavlova who visited Australia and New Zealand in the 1920s. Now it's been debated which of the two countries actually invented the pav and I'm not about to get into that long running argument. To start, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, then we're going to take our largest baking sheet, line it with parchment paper and draw a 9 inch circle using a round pan. Turn the paper over so you can see the line but the ink won't get into the pav. Next we're going to make the meringue. Beat 6 egg whites with a hand mixer on full speed till it looks cloudy and you start to see peaks. Then while continuing to beat the mixture, add one and a half cups of granulated sugar a spoonful at a time and keep beating until the meringue is stiff and shiny. It usually takes 10 to 15 minutes using my hand mix at full speed, but this could change depending on what mixer you're using. When your meringue looks like this, stop the mixer and add two teaspoons of red wine vinegar and set two teaspoons of cornstarch. So you're just sort of distributing it evenly over the top. This is what will give you that perfect fluffy marshmallow centre, but still keep it crispy on the outside. Fold this in carefully, then sprinkle in 1 4 teaspoon of salt, sift in 1 4 cup of cocoa powder, and add 2 ounces of bittersweet chocolate that's been finely chopped up. Then gently, gently fold everything in ever so slightly. You want to sort of under mix it in order to get that marbling effect. Look at that. Beautiful. It's important that you fold everything in gently because you don't want to knock out any of that beautiful air that you've got into all that effort of incorporating into your egg whites. The next thing we're going to do is take this tiniest bit of meringue, dab it four corners and make sure you stick down the parchment paper. Because you don't want that paper to flap up and hit the sides of the meringue when it's in the oven. Now mount the meringue mixture into the 9 inch circle and try to keep your pack within the confines of that circle. I also try to create higher walls on the sides and a nice cavity in the middle to put the whipped cream and berries later on. I also like to get a few peaks in there which will give you some texture when the pav's actually made. Okay, so we're going to pop that in the oven on the lowest level and immediately turn down the temperature to 300 degrees Fahrenheit and we're going to leave it in there for an hour till it's beautiful and dry it out on the outside. Turn the oven off Leave the door closed and let it cool completely in the oven. This will take two to three hours or you can even leave it overnight. When you're ready to serve, peel the pav off the parchment paper and transfer it to a serving plate. Take one pint of heavy cream and add one tablespoon of granulated sugar and two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Whip the cream until stiff peaks form. Pile this whipped cream into the cavity we made at the centre of the meringue. Make sure you get the whipped cream all the way to the edges, otherwise you're in massive danger of a soggy pav if the juices from the berries soak into the meringue below. It's not what you want. Then we're going to scatter 6 ounces of blueberries, 6 ounces of raspberries, and 6 ounces of blackberries on top of the whipped cream. And finally, as a finishing touch, using a cheese grater, shave half an ounce of bittersweet chocolate over your pav. What a pavlova. Serve it in wedges and keep leftovers in the fridge. Okay, let me know in the comment section below if you're going to try making this pav. Trust me, it's so good. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Cooking with Kurt. See you later.